welcome back to the shop. Today we're gonna to show you a little trick uh, to extracting broken bolts and studs and all that good stuff by using a welder. Now many of you probably saw this procedure out there on the web somewhere, uh, but today we're gonna to show you specifically how to extract exhaust manifold studs on the Ford modular engines. There's a lot of specifics to it. Uh, just for these engines. So I'm gonna go over that in detail and give you guys another option uh, when you're dealing with these freaking broken exhaust manifold studs. A lot of times in the newer vehicles, they're still breaking, of course, uh, but the shock towers are all built up and stronger now, so they're like this. And you're like trying to get in there and it's hard to get a drill in there, it's hard to get extractors in there, and a lot of times everything's just so far gone, it, it, it's so rusted, everything just starts breaking. At that point, it's time to bust out the welder. So we have one on the ground here. It's an engine I replaced, 5.4 liter three valve. And you can see we have some broken studs. Now this one right here is sticking out just a little bit, uh, whereas this one is sub flush. Either way, it works. Um, and we're gonna show you the procedure right now. All right, this is probably a familiar sight to you and you Probably wish you never saw one of these again. I know your frustration, believe me, but the welder is here to save the day. Now, the very first thing you wanna do, of course, get the manifold off, and then we'll start dealing with all these broken studs that are, that are left, okay? Either they broke beforehand or while you're pulling it off, it doesn't matter, the operation is the same. Now, the very first thing you wanna do is put um, some wet paper towels in each one of these exhaust ports. Believe me, you don't want to get any kind of uh, welding slag or BBs down into the cylinder. A lot of times the valves are open, you don't want any debris getting them down in there. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go after the studs that are broken. We're going to concentrate on them and we're going to get a little wire brush action going on here to clean them up, make them a little shinier and we can get that better conductive electrical spark going across a hotter weld and better success. You just want to clean them off in general, make them nice and shiny uh, the best you can. Now, as far as the your grounding clamp, or in this case, it's a positive clamp because I'm using uh, flux core, um, where I put that on these is not on the engine mounts like a lot of guys do. I feel I have better uh, conductance when I put it right here. There's an angled piece in the back of these cylinder heads, like a reinforcement webbing. And I just get down in here and I clean again so we have access to the metal itself. And then I'll, I'll put the clamp down here. Get it down in there. And this is easily accessible on any of the modular engines. So you get that down in there like that and we'll have a good uh, conductive path that way. And I, I feel I get a better uh, weld and that way a hotter weld and better reliability on that's actually going to come out. Okay. Now what's nice about this is let's say it's not as pretty as this where they're sitting there ready to go. You've been, you know, drilling and extracting them for a while, maybe grinding at them, getting old broken extractors out, and it's just a mess. Well, you can barely even see the stud, right? It doesn't matter. You get your pliers, okay, some long needle nose, and you can use the exact size nut, it's M8, okay? And you can place it right over it, and then we're going to tack it and then of course finish the weld. Let it cool and then we'll try to get it out. Now what I found to work better even is the bigger ones, bigger nuts. For whatever reason, you get more weld in there, more heat, whatever, and it seems to work. So if they're really stuck and the regular M8s are not working, uh, you can go to that. But getting back to my original point, let's say you can't even see this anymore. It's just ground down, it's destroyed, right? Guess what? You basically know where the stud, the stud hole is at, right? Get it over there, get the weld started. This thing will adhere to that, that metal, the, the actual steel, and it will leave the aluminum alone. And so it can really get you out of a bind. All right, let's get to it. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get all our personal protective equipment on, you know, gloves, welding, helmet, uh, make sure you have some fresh air, all that good stuff, and then we can get right to it. Our, our, our clamp is already on. Now it's time to turn the welder on and get this thing out of here. Now the settings I use in this welder, uh, they're real basic. You have wire feed speed and voltage. It's very basic, but that's all we need, a very basic welder. Now what I use is a wire feed speed of three. I figure two is too slow. In certain situations, maybe. 
uh, but three seems to be just perfect, whereas four on up is just too fast for the confined areas. And the voltage, well, I just keep it right in the middle. I might, might benefit from going to C or even D because it's a little bit thicker metal and it's encased in the head there. I don't know, you welding experts out there, you can tell me, but this seems to work just fine uh, in those confined areas. So let's flick it on and get started. All right, here we go. Now, my advice is to use a nice brand new nut like this, regular zinc coated ones. Like I said, the either the, the M8s or a little bit bigger, uh, so you get a good bite on there and a lot of heat, okay? Now what you wanna do with your welding gun, your, your tip is stick it out like that a little bit, your electrode, just a little bit, feed it out a little bit so you can get deeper inside of there when we do our initial tack weld. And the same thing after that when you're, you're building up inside of there, we can start from the base and work our way out through the threads here to the tip, and they'll basically flush, okay? That's the mistake I had at first, I just kinda tacked it in there and then I kind of did some and I was just kind of all over the place. Guess what? You're not getting deep into there and contacting that broken stud, okay? You need to really get deep down in there. So extend your electrode out a little bit. Okay, hood on and let's get to it. So we'll put it right over it just like that. Get it deep down in there and we'll hit it. Just enough to hold it for us, okay? And now it's gonna stay there, of course, uh, while we build up inside of it. And what I found with these also, is you see how they're getting nice and red like that? Well, that heat's transferring into that stud you know, to an extent, I mean, the head, the aluminum head is a great heat sink. Uh, so I wouldn't say it's exactly glowing red inside of there, that deep in there. Um, but it is definitely heating it, expanding and contracting. What you want to do is hit it like that a little bit. It gets glowing red. Okay. We're going to let it cool for a second. And the reason being is I found I'm using too much uh, a voltage or whatever, but I'm blowing out the side of the nut. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna build up a little bit and then we're gonna, we're gonna do it again. Like right now, with a little bit of build up like that, this thing will probably turn right out of there, but we're gonna get it a little bit more uh, in this area right here. So something like that. You see how it's like basically flush on there? Let's get to in there a little bit closer. See how it's basically flush? And you got quite a bit of weld in there. So at this point, it should come right out and have a good bite to it. So let's let it cool for a second, and we'll try turning it out with our wrench. Okay, now while this is cooling for a second, the one other tip I can give you is to use a regular open-end wrench like this, and the reason being is a lot of times the, the heat from the weld will distort the nut, so it's bigger and it's like an off-size. And also, um, it, it, it may get a little bit of slag on the side there and just be hard to use a regular socket on. So let's try this one out. Now you're gonna have to go back and forth just a little bit at first, kind of break the bond uh, to the aluminum cylinder head, which shouldn't be much. And then we can simply start turning it out. Something like this. And some of these, because if, especially if they're sub flush, you're gonna go through this process right here um, where you're just kind of getting past some, some of those threads and you're working it past. Okay, it's best to go back and forth and we can kind of get past those threads that the uh, weld float into. And then once we're past them, at this point, you know, it just comes right out. Now, don't be fooled by the fact that it's not glowing red anymore it's still gonna retain a lot of heat uh, for a while here. But you can see, I mean, I'm no good welder. Look at that weld. Not good. Some of you out there are probably laughing. Yeah, I know I can't weld good. Never said I could. Uh, but I can definitely do this. It's one of the skills you wanna acquire over time, working in automotive, because it can get you out of jams uh, just like this. 
And this looks really good actually, how centered and how uh, much it float out the back compared to when I first started doing this. Um, but it really grabs onto it. So this one's coming right out. So, yeah, look at that. Look in the back side here. Let me focus you. Not so bad, right? I know it's kind of hard to see. There you go. That's pretty in line right there. And centered over that stud. And that's the whole idea. We're just going to bite onto it, almost like glue. And we're just going to turn it out. We made a way for us to do that with by adding the hex here, the nut. And it works that great. Now at this point, of course, you want to use uh, a thread chaser and clean your threads out, some compressed air, all that good stuff. And that one is good to go. Next, we'll go over here uh, to this one. It's kind of sub flush. And we'll give you a few tips uh, for that one. Okay, now for bolts or studs that are broken sub flush like this depending on the situation where it's at it may be more beneficial to do a little something like this we're going to do a little build up uh, before putting the nut on there a little bit like that off of there get a better look at it we need some over here and you want to do this in stages like this because this will become molten metal and because it's angled it will just fall and it'll start dripping out of there okay so you want to do it in stages just like this when the engines in the vehicle Okay, looks like that, a little nub like that, sticking out. And then look at this. You get in there, let's say it's a little hard to get back in there and center perfectly. It's a little hard to hold this and weld at the same time. Well, that little nub sticking out is gonna help you uh, locate this nut center to the stud. Okay, it's like a little nipple sticking out of there. Now, some guys do this, they just take whatever the stud is it's broken flush sub flush whatever and they just keep building like we're doing right now until they just keep going keep going until there's a good size nub sticking out and then they use a regular extractor on there like a nut extractor, they'll pound it onto there and then they'll twist it out that way. I feel that way is, is a waste of, of welding wire. I really do. Uh, so I try to avoid that, but on these other ones that are hard to get to or sub flush, I will build up a little nipple uh, so we can center that nut onto there. And that'll help us center it so we can get the weld just right. And there you have it. It's a very simple process. It works very, very well, even for a person like me that does not know how to weld at all. I'm very, very green when it comes to welding, and you saw I was able to do it. And this is probably my third or fourth time welding. Um, so I learned a few things in the very first vehicle I did this on, on the modular engines, and I wanted to relay that information to you simply in this video, and I think I did that today. So hopefully it helps you guys fix your Ford yourself. I'll see you guys next time.